Okay, so I'm pretty fucking pumped about this one because there's <laughs> there's just so much. Um, first of all, for for the previous one that I, that I literally just made, uh, what I'm going to present here like ties right back into that, like into what that person is going through, into what that kind of mentality is, is like. And then also, the video that I, that got deleted, that that literally deleted itself, was was about this guy. But it was his last video, or, or actually, <laughs> not not the buffle video, <laughs> which which you absolutely need to get the sun to shine in. To where, quote unquote, the sun doesn't shine. You have gotta get the sun in there. I've been getting the sun on my on my <laughs> on my gonads lately, and it has been brilliant. Get the sun on them places. Uh, get the sun in the taint. Okay, just do it. So, uh, yeah, and then. In that video that got deleted, I mentioned this person and to check her out and that I very well could have made a video about her last one because it was so fucking gorgeous. And then wouldn't you know it, they have a video together. <laughs> and it ties back into what I was just talking about and uh, basically what I've been talking about lately with, with the mentalities the imagery, uh, we, we get into the fucking children, we, and then hopefully you can start to see this, the synchronicities happening here with the censorship, the connection with the children, the connection with the imagery, the connection with trying to tighten the grip of the stupidity, essentially. The stupidity mentality. Ah, oh, this is fucking brilliant. I'm just, I'm just, uh, especially just, just coming from like the energy from the last video. It's like I don't want to fucking make this, but I was asked to watch this, so I'll make this and. Even though I didn't want to do it, I was like appreciative, appreciative <laughs> of uh, <clears throat> the refinement that happened and, and that needed to happen and that uh, needs to happen. Uh, just, just to be a mirror of the refinement that needs to happen in all of our lives. We, we, we need to refine into things that truly serve us, into things that truly... Uh, Bring, bring about life and bring about inspiration and joy and happiness and engage those things. And that doesn't mean shy away from the darkness. It doesn't mean run away from the things that give us struggle or give us pain or uh, are hard. That means confronting it, dealing with it, choosing it. The brighter side, choosing happiness, choosing choosing to enjoy the process. Even if even if what we're going through is fucking shit, hey, guess what? You're fucking alive right now. You you have the ability and the option to experience what you're fucking experiencing right now. Oh hey, and guess what? You have a choice. So you can choose to See, <laughs> you can choose to engage the darkness and get caught up within that, or you can choose to transform it and uh, bring about levity in the situation. No matter the situation, you can bring about levity and laugh and enjoy yourself. Enjoy the moment. And yes. I'm 
the whole moment thing, you can get, you know, trapped within a mentality of, uh, you know, something about just the moment, but, you know, it, it's, it's all the moment. It is the thing, though. Like, all of time, quote-unquote, it is, is moment, is the moment. <laughs> So, like, there's just one now, and then what we recollect of it, what we project of it, but there just is, okay? There just is. So it's up to you. You have the choice how to engage this isness. This is the beauty of it. So here we go. This is, this, uh, this is fucking gorgeous. Right off the bat here, we're going to be laughing our asses off. I am going to be because uh, this is how this is how it is for people out here who uh, fast, who realize what nutrition is and sustenance is. Which is good, because we need to get the world healthy. We need clean air, water, and soil, and we need conscious, clean, clear human beings first and foremost to change the systems. And then you said sometimes you will eat food. So when is that? When you actually like eat food? When I'm hungry. When you're hungry. Yeah. So my... <laughs> and, this... <laughs> and this is the thing. Whenever you do a lot of fasting, a lot of cleansing... Uh, your your level of hunger, you redefine what that word means for you, what it means to be hungry. We could be hungry for so many different things in life. And uh, whenever we truly get clean inside, we realize what we truly are hungry for. We're not hungry for food. We're hungry for life. We're hungry for experience, for uh, for engagement. We're hungry for love. For joy, for happiness, for fulfillment, for sharing this abundance of love that that begins to overflow within us. And that's one of the things I talked about in the video that got deleted was that's that's one of the stages of uh you know, just being a human and waking up is we engage, we we go through this process of uh, understanding. And then and then we just we get to a point where uh we go so far into the feeling that we our, our cup we we empty our cups out first and foremost. And then we fill that cup up with our own gnosis, our own uh, experience and love. And then the cup starts to overflow. And then comes the sharing aspect. Sharing the experience of gnosis. So that others can be reminded that they too can experience this for themselves. Jobs to get the world healthy. That's my job. I created it. Okay, so let's see if I can find the places here that I want to touch upon. Might take a minute. <laughs> Let me try to find the right places. Ooh, that was good. Gratitude for me is everything. One of my mentors told me it's the highest form of love. I just know that the opposite really showed up in my life. When I wasn't grateful for the small things in my life, my life turned to shit. When I implemented gratitude, little things in my life began to change, and those little things turned into big things. I am so grateful for everything, even the bad stuff that's in my life, because it's teaching me in the moment. 
Wham! That's what I'm talking about. Going into the darkness and learning from it. Not getting sucked up into it. Realizing where our teachers are, which is literally everything. But even in the things that we don't necessarily enjoy in the moment, those oftentimes are our greatest teachers. And so uh, if you ever <laughs> build up the courage to dive into cold therapy, to dive into uh, certain pranayama practices, uh, things like Wim Hof, you will, you will uh, be, or even just like extreme uh, exertion of any kind, you, you are pushing yourself to the limits of, of what is comfortable and then you are transcending those limits and realizing the benefit, the lasting benefit that you are cultivating by engaging these things and then you transform your mentality and you transform your reality by doing this. My brother challenged me to a gratitude journal. Three things you're grateful for first thing in the morning, and three things you're grateful for at the end of the night. It saved my life, you know? What, what can I say? I was in that complaining, blaming loop. I'm human just like everyone else, and the human condition is real, right? So these, these practices can help ground me. Yeah, I guess you could just... That's fucking gorgeous, dude. And like, like the video I just fucking made, like, uh, that guy's stuck in those those modes. And uh, that's that's very synchronistic for me as well with with uh, him him showing his journaling and sharing that because uh, I I was just in a yoga class where we had a uh, after our shavasana which is just at the end of the class where you lay down and just try to let go and uh, <laughs> I can go into a whole other story and video of that whole process but. Uh, Because letting go in and of itself is a whole whole other layer to tap into. And, uh, it, it, that specific class, um, yeah, it was very powerful, especially with that specific yoga teacher. She has a voice that is... Um, One of the most soothing voices I have uh, ever heard. So, and it's not just that it's soothing, it's that within the voice, if, if you can feel past certain layers, you can feel um, basically the life experience of, of the person in their voice, and you can go past that and feel their soul. So... Um, I feel this person's soul, and then whenever they talk, and whenever they have the intent of uh, basically soothing and guiding people within um, either a guided meditation or just allowing your body to relax down. Um, I'm, I'm in a place where I, I allow myself to, to relax down a little bit deeper because... There's some yoga teachers where I, I do not go to that. And it's not just the yoga teacher. It's also the, the people in the yoga class. Because uh, for the most part, I, I like to relax down and then also like engage every person in the class and, and help heal them in the relaxation. But... Uh, Sometimes, uh, with, with certain special people, certain special yoga uh, instructors, a certain special cadence and resonance in the voice, they do the work for me. So their voice and their soul, their spirit, relaxes the people down for me. And so I don't need to go and do that. 
I am allowed the opportunity to relax way down. And in so doing, um, this is like a bioacoustic resonance that happens. People pick up upon um, deep level stuff that's happening around them. So this deep level engagement with myself, other people are able to feel this and they uh, go deep for themselves as well. So in this specific class that I was mentioning, um, there was a girl that I'd never seen before, and then after the Shavasana, and it was intense. Like, uh, I I know that whenever I allow myself to go deep around other people, that at least, you know, quite a few other people are going to have intense experiences for themselves. And how I know this is that usually people don't say anything <laughs> afterwards. They're, they're uh, chatty Cathy's beforehand, but afterwards... Uh, after they experience that deep level relaxation and gnosis, they're zinned out, <laughs> which is fucking beautiful. So they're just kind of like, uh, okay, bye. <laughs> they leave. This person sat up. Hmm. Now I won't mention that, but then she started journaling and she journaled all the way until I finally left. She was still journaling. And I... I, It brought so much joy to me. Like... That someone... They experienced a deep level of relaxation. And who knows what she experienced. But... She, she journaled afterwards. She stayed in stillness and silence. And... Wanted to put that into an expression, into an art form, and into a, a modality where she could later look back upon that and feel and reflect upon it. And uh, it brought so much fucking joy to me, to my heart. I, I really wanted to tell her that that I I appreciated what she was doing so much. I wanted to share to her <laughs> uh, that, that I appreciated what she was doing. But... I did not because she was in the flow of it. She she was just continuously writing, and I was like, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna break that flow or interject. Just just to let her know that maybe she can pick up on it, maybe not. But like, she's in the moment. She's feeling it. She's writing. Like, I'm, I'm gonna. This is part of the shaman. Like this is you allow this process to happen. You allow people to have their experience. You don't interject. You allow it. You hold space for it. And whenever people need the aid, then you allow, then you come in and you allow them to get back in their, to, into their own flow. That's shamanism 101, okay? Also something I mentioned in my Delia video. Mm, where are we? Here we are. Whatever their hearts desire. Here we are. Find them in a spiritual plane. To yes. Yes. Then I have to. <laughs> okay. This will probably be about the end of this here. After I show this, and then I have a card that I drew. Um. He's going to get into his kids, and, uh, and this is, this is what it's all about, is transforming this imagery, and it starts with our children and, and the kids, and allowing them to learn in, in new ways, and, and by new I mean original ways. Tapping back into our true roots and our true ancestry and engaging in these ways. If we're truly going to change the world, then I have to lead myself. And I did the research on education and how the brain works and brain functions. So I send my children to the Waldorf school system because it honors the child as a spiritual being. 
coming in from the spiritual plane to the physical plane. They honor the brain development of the child. Waldorf teaches the kids how to think, not what to think. My <clears throat> okay. And that right there is the only thing I'm going to interject on because uh, that, that's the indoctrination system. So even though I've heard, you know, good things about the Waldorf, uh, the indoctrination system teaches you how to think, even though they, they guise that with teaching you what to think. It, it's ultimately to teach you to, to box in your mind into how to engage okay so this is the true schooling and fooling that that's happening is to cut your mentality off to short circuit your mind into thinking to a certain point so uh, it doesn't matter that what they're teaching you you know because uh, ultimately the individual can begin to choose like how to think and what to think and where to engage so the uh the true corruption with the indoctrination systems inside the education system is trying to teach the child how to engage how to think what is correct what is not correct what is okay to engage what is not correct to engage oh we don't have time to go into that further because we're going to, into the next subject and into the next subject. You're going to be tested upon this subject and then we're going to, into the next one. And you, you don't have to remember anything about the previous one because we're going into the next subject. And yes, sometimes things carry over, but ultimately it's a system that teaches you how to regurgitate crap and then forget it and then get get indoctrinated into doing this in your life to do this outside of school why why do you think they go to school for so long and they sit in chairs for so long and they listen because they want the, per the child the being to do this for the rest of their life. They want to indoctrinate the person, the being, to do, to do this in all aspects of their life. And this usually happens. In large part because so many people go along with it. Their peers, their friends go along with it. And if they choose not to, they're an outcast. They're weird. They're unpopular. My dream and choice for rearing my children is to provide them an atmosphere for them to go deeper in their understanding of themselves. Yes. And then from there, utilize their brain and the, the, the laws of alchemy to create Beautiful. whatever the mind can envision, whatever their hearts desire. They can program their mind to create their reality. We're not really taught that in school. I was on my own since 14 years old. And so um, I believe that resilience and strength and character help you in the, in the long run. Schooling and programming by the, the industrial age school system, you know, is very short lived. And so they need very practical uh, skills and tools. And uh, that's my job as a parent to help them understand that. <sighs> and this is just like full circle here, like with talking about <laughs> shamans and parents and then having the video that i that, that got deleted which was about shamanism and that very guy and how he's talking about being a parent and allowing the children to to engage and learn and basically find themselves you you allow the child to remember who they truly are and then they will show you. You know, <laughs> so many, so many levels of beingness and love that you 
you you didn't even know existed. I mean, there's there's love, you know, with with your lover and engaging with your partner, and that's a whole another level. And you experience a whole like your whole reality transforms. Everything around you um, takes on a new filter with with this kind of love. But then allowing your children to uh, to find themselves and to experience that, I think that's probably the greatest fucking experience that you could ever have as a human being. <laughs> and I and I think that uh, if you want to call it God or the Creator, I feel like that's. Uh, probably the greatest experience that 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 uh, he she you know can can have as well is uh, realization um, um, seeing seeing the children wake up and, and remember and realize uh, their true potential. The true reality, um, creating in harmony and in, in, in love and in clarity. <laughs> and, and I mean, this this is what's uh, this is what we're going into. And you, uh, everyone has their own process of waking up, and you got to go through the darkness and. and uh, Feel you at least got to feel. You know you don't have to go so far into it that you get corrupted by it or that you allow it to taint you. But uh, you do have to feel it, and then you do have to transmute it, and you you have to see beyond it. And see into the good and see into the pure. And this isn't love and light hippy dippy shit. This is the full spectrum shit of going all the way in and then choosing choosing to continue and choosing love. Choosing to see things on a level where you allow it to transform your mentality into a clearer vision. And this clearer vision is the imagery that I that I'm speaking of. The imagery that is uh, being cultivated. So yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll share the card here before 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 I end this. But yeah, I'll also share links to both these people's uh, YouTube videos. Uh, they're they're both amazing people, and how very synchronistic that they both <laughs> link up like this. Ever, ever, the air, beautiful, and that's also beautiful with the lightning bolts and the clouds and the <laughs> I, I think this is probably the first time that I've seen lightning in December.
air, keywords, ideas, communications, making connections, perspective. The element of air suggests the power of communication to inform your life, and I will go ahead and say transform, but that depends upon the individual as well. In ancient times, flight-bound birds were believed to embody divine wisdom, transporting inspiration down from the heavens to aid humanity. And this is what happens in the form of the birds that you see in your life. They have a very specific message for you, and they are there for you, as is all wildlife that you come across. Through these communications, I'm sorry, though these communications are ultimately helpful, they can be as galvanizing as a lightning bolt from the blue. Alternatively, to view the world from the air is one way to gain a new perspective on circumstances. When the air card appears in a reading, it invites us to see the forest for the trees. It also represents a period of intellectual growth. What a perfect card. How very synchronistic. Once again. The ruler of the air. So, uh, the communications are galvanizing and are also transforming through this, uh, tightening process that's happening. Um, like, like I've said in my previous one, well, the, the one before, the one that's going to be before this, The process is, uh, it's individual, but it's also felt collectively. It's, it's, it's almost like the, uh, the individual is kind of being played out, um, by this, this collective, uh, tapestry. And I keep getting images and uh, realizations about the engagements that I've been having. Some of the very deep level stuff that I've been engaging. Um, and, it, and it keeps tying back into the children. And uh, I just feel a... Uh, A yearning to to keep engaging and uh, being reminded that I'm not just doing this for myself. That there's a, there's a great, even though we 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 can see ourselves or feel like we're alone or, or a singular individual, we are all connected, and so we each of our experiences is is aiding. And the collective uh, basically becoming or becoming aware, the, the awakening, the awakening of uh, of basically just waking up from the dream that we've been led to believe is is real.
power of the image, the power of your mind is, is a very, is the most powerful thing that you can engage. So utilize wisely your power of choice, your power to choose in every moment how to respond, how to react, how to feel. You can choose how you feel. And yes, you know, sometimes we we go with the flow and we allow inspiration to to guide us, but whenever things happen to where we have darker emotions start to uh come about, realize your power of choice. You can see things past the momentary circumstance and into the basically the grander picture and scheme of things and then you can laugh at it you can choose what how you want to see things what you want to engage if you want to engage the darkness momentarily but then ultimately transcend it and come back into your joy into your central point into uh, what you truly are And in the darkness, find your light. And in that light, <laughs> maybe you can uh, touch upon what, what you really are, what we all really are. And yes, it does take time. As in, it does take experience. to remember how to transmute and transform. But the more and more you do it, the more and more you can tap into and commune with others who are doing the same. And we can re-piece this puzzle and transform this occulted imagery into one that's true and pure and lasting. I love you. Peace out.